music hola a todos what is up today i'm going to be sharing all about my plant-based journey which actually spans quite a couple of years as well as we're going to be making oyster mushrooms so this is the first time i've ever made oyster mushrooms and i'm calling this um live today alkaline inspired because had it not been for me researching alkaline recipes i would never have even fucking known what oyster mushrooms are tbh i actually grew up really fucking hating mushrooms <laughs> so uh i feel like me liking mushrooms now is such an adult thing because yeah when i was growing up if you would have told me that i was going to be eating mushrooms i would have laughed in your fucking face but yeah so alkaline inspired because through my research of alkaline food I came across oyster mushrooms so really quickly before i like do the rest of today i'm gonna put my hair up shout out to my lock journey man we've been locked like four months now and it's been a beautiful journey so um are you gonna help me with what are you doing the brownies mm -hmm. okay all right i'm going to this is like low-key not even really gonna be like a cook with me like it's a cook with me but i got you know if i'm gonna be talking about my plant-based journey i'm not gonna try to do too much and give y'all like a whole fucking like this is the recipe but knowing me i'll probably throw in little things so honestly just watch me i just want to take this out this is this is the first time i have ever bought oyster mushrooms so again i heard about it while i was researching alkaline meals slash dr sebi's um diet let's call it but i've never seen them so i just thought i'd show you guys what they look like so from this, we're going to make chicken wings, fried chicken wings, inspired. Before I break these apart, oh, we only bought three. I forgot about that. I'm going to grab a plate. We bought, four, we bought four? No, three, six, nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. These were about $3? A little less than $3, I think. They were like two fifty at Whole Foods. Um, I would say the only thing I didn't like about it is that it seemed so small for like three bucks. I was like, this is going to make literally like two chicken wings. In my book, this is going to make two chicken wings. So, but yeah, we are not going to rinse them out because the water is just going to get sucked up. So, what is it going to say? Like a damp towel? A damp paper towel? I think so. Yeah, we're just going to take a damp paper towel and just rub it down because we don't want to submerge them in water because the mushroom's just going to soak it all up and we want crispy. We don't want soggy. No soggy. And again, this is alkaline inspired because um, not all of my seasonings are alkaline. I don't use alkaline water. I just use filtered water because that's what I can get and that's okay. Okay. I think what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this like cup full of pure like filtered water. I mean, are we gonna need it? No, there's nothing else we need right now. Why don't y'all let me? Oh, you were just looking at an oyster recipe. Well, then you can join this journey with me today because this is the first time I'm ever making it. <laughs> we can take this journey together. But um. Oh. We got a runaway mushy. But yeah, because some people just came in. I just want to show y'all again really quickly what the oyster mushrooms look like. If you have... I got this at Whole Foods. So I live in Lancaster, PA. So if you have a Whole Foods, then you can get them there. Like I said, they were like two fifty. But... Yeah, I'm just gonna... We're not gonna... Hi, Beyonce. Hi, love. Because we don't want the mushrooms to just absorb the water, I'm just taking a damp paper towel to just get in all of these crevices. Because we, again, we don't want the mushroom to soak up all that water because we're trying to make some crispy, crispy um, 
wings. And it's Whole Foods. Like, Whole Foods has such, at least to my knowledge, they have high food quality standards. So, I'm not bugging too much about the fact that I can't really wash this. Although, I will say that was definitely my, my first thought. Hi, Pamela. How you doing, boo? <laughs> Why don't y'all let me know what you guys are cooking today? So, I'll let y'all know what we're cooking today. We are making the wings. We're making baked mac and cheese, vegan, of course. A salad. We're making some brownies. Today, I, we are experimenting with having... Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. Today, we're experimenting with using chia seeds instead of eggs. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, was that it? We're doing salad, baked bread garlic knots baked mac and cheese oh and we're doing candied yams i completely forgot to prep for the candied yams um i'm gonna have to see what we're gonna need to do because y'all look at my type a self this is my whole yeah so we're doing mac and cheese salad garlic knots and bread mushroom wings brownies and ice cream so yeah we type A over in this household. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just finishing up. Wiping these, making sure there's nothing in here. No gunk, nothing I don't want. So, to begin with my plant-based journey. When I was 15, I'm about 20, I'm 22 now. Um, when I was 15, this documentary... Uh, no, this book, Fast Food Nation, became wildly popular for some reason during that time. I did not read Fast Food Nation, but I watched the Netflix documentary. And I'm gonna be so real with y'all. I watched the documentary and I saw how the meat industry and the dairy industry treats animals. And I was like... I'm never fucking eating anything ever again. So after I watched that, I immediately turned vegan. My, so let me give you some context. I'm Dominican. My parents had never fucking heard of a vegan. They had never heard a vegetarian. I mean, they heard a vegetarian, but these things were like not very, they didn't realize, they didn't think it was normal. This is way, way, way. So remember, I'm, and this time I'm 15. So this is way before being vegan became trendy and so my reasoning for going vegan the first time around was not motivated by health at all but rather motivated because i loved animals and that's just my truth so about a year and a half goes by of me being um vegan and um i'm not sure what happened i think it just when i went vegan it was the summertime so it was pretty easy to go vegan. There was an abundance of fruits and vegetables. And my parents always had, like, they've always had lots of fruits and vegetables in the house. So real quickly before I continue with my plant-based uh, story, I just want to show these are what are, can I turn the camera? Yes. <laughs> these are what our wings are looking like. So this is going to be one wing by itself. Another one. And it's really important to keep the base intact or otherwise you'll have stuff like this where it's just like the without the base, it's not going to be stable. And you can see this is my good example of uh, what not to do. So this one mushroom kind of fell off. However, we can still coat this and um, fry this and this will be a chicken wing on its own. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have about eight, which is fine. There's going to be three of us here. Um, and also I'm gonna, my dad hates mushrooms or in, um, Spanish it's called ongol. He hates mushrooms. So I low key want to save one and try to trick him and see if he'll like it. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead now that that stuff is done. I'm gonna move on to our dredges. So I'm gonna make a wet dredge. Sorry. Chocolate. 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 My mom's a baker and she never let me in the kitchen because I would always steal her food. I would always steal her leftovers. Oh, this is really thick. Mm -hmm. mm. 
That is so good. Mm, 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 mm. I will, boo. I will tell them you said hi. I'm going to probably see them later when I go steal food. <laughs> oh, that brownie mix is so good. So, about a year and some change goes by. I was coasting being vegan. It was fine. In the beginning of me being vegan, I did not eat um, very healthy. And I remember my dad being like, what the hell is the point of you not eating meat if all you're going to do is eat fry, fry, like fries and potato chips and Oreos and all these things just because they say they're vegan. So, you know, I begrudgingly started to eat more fruits and vegetables. I became friends with someone who was pescatarian, as in they don't eat meat, but they eat fish. <clears throat> and I do believe he also uh, had like honey and stuff like that. And so I became intrigued. I was like, you know what? It's kind of hard being vegan. Again, this was way before being vegan was trendy. This was way before, you know... You could go to the store and get some fucking daya, some vegan cheese. The, the like, uh, resources that were available just weren't, it just wasn't that much. Which one do you want to make the wet dredge? Do you have a preference? So we're going to put the mushrooms. First, we're going to coat them in flour. And I'm going to season my flour. <laughs> and then the other bowl will be flour we can use milk or water so and i'm gonna one. season that again and so that'll be our wet this is our wet so that we can put them all in and at once. let them okay cool you mm -hmm. want to start grabbing our lineup of seasonings so yeah i heard about being pescatarian and so because it was kind of hard to be vegetarian vegan at that time I just decided to switch, so I slowly started eating. Put it under the sink. You what? Put it under the sink. Under the what? Under the sink. Why are you gonna have me hold that if I'm trying to do the dredge? Thank you. What do we want to put? Yeah, I want some of that. He's grabbing all of our seasonings. <laughs> Thank you. So I just started eating fish. So, you know, I started eating fish because I was like, yeah, you know, it's not as bad as eating chicken and, you know, all that stuff. So I just started eating fish and then eventually I just started eating meat. And I didn't really think about being plant-based or vegan until I was 19 in college. Went to pit. <laughs> That's not to flex, y'all. I dropped out of college. So if y'all didn't go to college, if y'all dropped out, I see you. I love you. While I was in college, this is when being vegan was starting to become popular. I started doing yoga because it was being po it was popular. And I have no shame in that. I've changed, and that's beautiful. So I started to experiment again with being plant-based. But being in college... I had a lot of things to pay for, you know. I was living on my own for the first time, which is not cheap. And especially going to school, I had a dog. Shit was like, it was not easy to be plant-based again. It's definitely gotten a lot easier. And because I have had so much experience in being vegan, it's become easier. But while I was in school, being vegan again didn't really stick because it was difficult for me to be able to provide myself with healthy, nutritious meals that didn't cost a fucking arm and a leg. <clears throat> and plus, back then I didn't like as much vegetables and stuff as I do now. So, oh, I'm definitely gonna need more than this. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need more than this. So, once again, I abandoned being plant-based. Um, and I didn't really think about it. I also had a partner who, like, ate steak. Like, my partner at the time used to eat so much steak and just, like, not very healthy things. Like, if you want to eat steak 
cool, but at least have some like vegetables or something with it. So the fact that it was hard for me to begin and I was so easily influenced by my partner, it was so hard to become plant-based. Truly, if you do have somebody who can be like your accountability partner when you're trying to exercise or, you know, eat better, it's so nice to have someone there. And I'm not saying you need to have a partner to do that, right? You definitely don't. I'm having a lot of trouble opening this. However, I found that when I tried going, when I, well, successfully went plant-based this year, it was a lot easier because my partner was also open to the idea of being plant-based. It's not the same partner. But um, did I just put that in water? Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> my partner was a lot more open to being plant-based. And so it made it easier because we were able to experiment together. We were able to have fun together. Um, where's the whisk? We were able to have fun and experiment with stuff like making alkaline walnut meat or um, making tofu for the first time, like trying to veganize some of our favorite dishes so that it was easier. So we'll fast forward to this year. I'm not really sure why I want to go plant-based this time around. Um, yeah, I, I, it was just something I really wanted to do. Again, like I said, last year with my previous partner, I had wanted to go plant-based, but it was a lot more difficult because... You did it on the quick. Yeah, we did do it on the quick. <laughs> Pink Himalayan salt, man, I love this. And gotta add some chili powder. Right now, I'm just adding my seasonings to my dry dredge. Y'all, like I said, I did not like mushrooms growing up so i'm trying to season these every step of the way to ensure that this tastes absolutely amazing i've been, i've actually had um chicken of the woods if y'all don't know that's another type of mushroom that is fucking fantastic i don't know where you can get chicken of the woods but if you are in a grocery store and you see chicken of the woods mushroom baby baby grab it I have never tasted a mushroom that tasted exactly like fucking chicken. Like, the name Chicken of the Woods, yeah, these white people didn't just name it that. Now, it dead ass tastes like chicken. And it's so fucking fantastic. So, do you have the whisk or not? Thank you. So, my partner who's, like, chilling back there. I raised the idea of going plant-based to him. He was already, like, low-key, like... Um, he was open to me being to doing yoga with me. I am a yoga teacher, and so if you dating me, you're gonna do some fucking yoga, okay? <laughs> if you my friend, you're gonna do some yoga. So he was already like open to the idea of like meditating and like, you know, doing all this stuff and doing yoga. And so I kind of felt like when I brought up the idea of being plant-based, you were just kinda like, okay. He was like he was just he's very easygoing. Where my Capricorn's at. <laughs> I ain't Capricorn, but he is. We gonna season it a little more. So, um, the way we... What? In the knees. The way we transitioned into being plant-based was we actually implemented what I call phases. And each phase, we took out something that was not vegan or plant-based or alkaline so i think the first one was like cheese which was hard that was hard your man's a capricorn too man these capricorns they're they're interesting they're interesting i love i am blessed to know he's a capricorn my youngest well she's not my youngest niece anymore because we just had two new babies in the house but um my one niece is also a Capricorn, and I have several people in my yoga training who are Capricorns, and I just don't know why. I'm just like, I have so many Capricorns in my life, and I have a lot of appreciation for them. I love y'all, Caps. <laughs> what the hell was I saying? So, yeah, we took out cheese, which was hard because we like cheese. We do like cheese. I'm just going to move myself, move the camera over so y'all can see what I'm doing. Hopefully that don't fall. Here we go. I'm just gonna move on to making my wet dredge. But yeah, so we we cut out cheese. Cutting out milk was it like that that wasn't a phase because I stopped 
cheese is hard. I really like cheese. And it's hard to find good vegan cheeses. Like, I'm still shopping around for good vegan cheeses. I'm going to be real with y'all. Um, but, yeah, I stopped drinking milk for, like, cow's milk um, when I went vegan the first time around when I was 15. And that was not a, that was not a difficult change because I never liked cow's milk. I did not understand when people would really sit, like, re people really be out here, like, pouring a cup of milk some cow titty milk <laughs> that's like, what i ain't here to judge i'm not here to judge y'all if y'all drink cow's milk but i never liked that this was way before me being plant-based i just never thought i never thought cow's milk was good but um so yeah that was not that wasn't even a, <laughs> that wasn't even hard i'm going so hard off of cow's milk i'm sorry y'all clearly i was triggered in the way <laughs> i clearly um, you know, you never put the walnuts into the brownies. They're no. just sitting right there. That's true. Yeah. So since we don't, I don't, I don't even know why you started doing the salad. I was gonna start cutting. But, yeah. Can you just like put it on top? Yeah. What the fuck was I saying? Okay, oh yeah. After I got on such a tangent for like cow milk. <laughs> um. So cheese. Uh, what the hell was the next phase? The next phase for me was shrimp. seafood. Yeah, shrimp. So if y'all read... There were all phases for you, really, because I never really stopped. Yeah, he kept eating... I mean, we sometimes eat shrimp. I don't really... This is why I call myself plant-based, because I'm not hard on myself. Some days I eat regular cheese, some days I don't. I eat it sparingly, and that is my... That's my diet, you know what I mean? If you want to be completely fully alkaline, completely fully vegan, those things are totally doable. And yeah, I, I, I ain't judging nobody for what they eat. The, the point is, we need to eat more living foods. So I ain't going to judge you if you eat meat or pork or whatever the fuck you choose to do today. I just hope that my recipes can give you some inspiration to bring some more plant-based meals into your life. And really, that's all it is. I'm not going to say you're my high horse. Um... But yeah, so seafood, because I did allow myself to eat seafood as I was transitioning. Hi, boo. That's great. You're vegan. Awesome. I did allow myself to eat salmon, shrimp. Um, if you read the book by Queen Afua, Sacred Woman, um, the diet talks about how, like, you know, when you eat fish and stuff that are bottom feeders, you're just taking in all of that. And I was like... Holy shit. <laughs> Which, if y'all don't know, shrimp are bottom feeders. <laughs> and I was like, shrimp? <laughs> so, you know, I did allow myself to eat salmon. Um, tilapia. Yeah. Um, and slowly, I cut out those things, too. I don't follow the sacred woman diet. I don't follow the Dr. Sebi diet. I just take inspiration from both of them. And I will say they definitely inspire me. Like, I like doing the smoothies that are in the Sacred Woman diet. Super dope. Um, is that some? Are we doing, you want to do milk or water to this? Wet dredge. Milk? Milk? And, ooh, that garlic. That garlic. So yeah, we're just moving on to the wet dredge. Um, and let's see. So yeah, started the cutting out seafood. And that's really where, and this by the way is just some oat milk that I'm putting into my dredge to make it wet. Um, experimentation began. I was on a mission. I was like, I want to make this plant-based diet last so i had to sit with myself and say what didn't work the first two times around what specifically about my plant-based journey was not working out and instead of being like oh i couldn't make it stick it was none of that i said we're gonna drop the shame because the shame ain't doing nothing for us the shame and the the guilt did nothing for us and we're going to really ask ourselves, what do I need in order to become plant-based and make it stick? Because I wanted to shift my mind. I wanted to shift my mind from 
I want to eat food because it tastes good to I want to eat food that's medicine. I want to eat food that sustains my life, but I want that shit to taste good. All right. I'm a Taurus. I love to eat. I've been a foodie all my life since way before astrology and numerology was in my fucking life. I was about that food. <laughs> I love to travel. I love to eat good food. I love to smoke weed. That is Taurus to a T. And so I was like, a part of my plant-based journey is I need to make good food. I'm not going to sit here and fucking, I'm not going to sit here and be miserable eating vegetables that aren't seasoned. I'm not going to be here watching these vegan recipes from white people on YouTube that don't use nothing but salt and pepper. And I wanted to alkalize and veganize Caribbean recipes. Like I stated earlier, I'm Dominican. I grew up eating a lot of amazing things. And the thought of not having those things was kind of sad. And so I was like, I'm not going to lose my connection to my heritage. We're just going to remix it. You know what I mean? And so I've been workshopping, like, how can we alkalize? You know, how can we veganize platano burgers? How can we veganize salami? You know, um... How can I veganize Los Tres Golpes? You know what I mean? How can I share that? Because I want more people. Yes, Rachel Alma is fucking fantastic. I love her. Um, I was like, this transformation that I'm having in my food life and my, my lifestyle is something that I want to share. And I'm so grateful that my family has actually become a lot more open mm-hmm. to... Yes, and his two, my partners, have become a lot more open to being vegan. And it's not about me trying to change them, right? It's not about that. But the fact that they can look at me and be like, oh, oh, you're making walnut meat? Oh, you're making oyster mushroom wings? Oh, that's dope. If they can eat it once a week, that's fantastic, y'all. Because we should never set out to try to change nobody. That's not... We weren't put on this earth to judge others and to change others. No. No. That's not why we came here. (laughs) But the fact that I can live my life by shining my light and being, speaking my truth and inspiring other people to experiment, to play in their kitchens, to have fun. That's dope. That's dopeness. That's some real life shit that I like. So, yeah, just keep on making that fucking wet dredge. My mushrooms are just sitting there patiently waiting. I'm actually... Ooh, I forgot. Where did I put them seasonings? I'm really about to bust. Ooh, thank you. You want a herb? Mm -hmm. The truth, y'all. The truth i don't like coffee all like that but this shit's the truth i stole this freaking pack of holiday ham spices from my mama last night and i had the idea that i was going to take some of the time and put it in the wet dredge because i love having accents of green on my food i love it Growing up, my mom always said, the more colorful a plate, the healthier it is. What is that? Garlic. Garlic. Ooh, we can put some more in. Because it's, yeah, I want these more. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever done mushroom wings. So I'm really trying to make them as flavorful as as possible. But um, yeah, growing up, my mom always said, the more colorful a plate is, the healthier it is. You know, she always encouraged me to have a rainbow on my plate. And so we're going to live up to that. Shout out to my parents <laughs> because, um, unfortunately, because of health complications they both have, they've actually been told by their doctor to have a plant-based diet. And so it's caused us, although it was a little bit sad, it caused us to become closer through our food. I always felt like food was love. And that may also be a reason why I did have, uh, again, to be my full transparent self when I was growing up in high school, I had disordered eating and a lot of uh, body shame issues. 
I just put that whole shit in there instead of <laughs> instead of the little piece I just mm. grabbed. <laughs> Here we go. And so I, I've been on a mission to repair my my relationship with food. I guess that you could say that was the motivation for me going plant based. But in becoming plant based, I've actually become a lot more compassionate to myself. Remember, again, I asked myself, what was the reasoning behind why the last two times that I went plant based didn't stick? And I realized that one of the things that made it not stick was shame and guilt and not being happy with myself for not being able to live up to unrealistic expectations I had for myself. And that is why this time around I said, I need to do phases. And I need to allow myself the grace and the compassion and the patience to say, yeah, this is going to take some time because I want this to stick. I don't want a healthy month. No, I want a healthy life. And so I really needed to uncover a lot of things. There was a lot of shadow work, actually, in my plant-based journey. My food journey was a spiritual journey, and it is a spiritual journey. And so I do... I do take it seriously. But I also let myself off the hook, yo. If I want to eat some fucking walnut meat pizza and then finish it off with a dairy-free chocolate ice cream, that's amazing, yo. Balance, truly balance. Don't let the internet make you hate yourself because you're not vegan. No, don't let the internet take away your self-love. Don't let the internet make you think you have to live up to an unrealistic expectation. That don't work like that. Because love and love is the only way out, right? The guilt and all of that, shame, and it's not, it's not. Bet y'all ain't think y'all was going to get that sermon on the Thanksgiving day. We ain't in church, but I'm going to tell y'all some truth anyway. So, yeah, I'm just adding a bunch of time to the wet dredge. And I actually don't get to play too much with... Um, like, I was going to say real herbs as if like the powder herbs aren't real, but I guess like living herbs and I do want to do more of that. And so this was really fun. I thought this was going to be a lot easier to just snap them off. But I suppose it's giving me the, the time. There we go. The time. <laughs> Running out of time. Anyway. I think I've got enough in there. And just for some good measure, I'm actually going to place in some dry parsley. Because we like that green, y'all. All right, so I think we are finally ready to begin to dredge our mushies. And check on our oil seems like our oil is doing good these are mushrooms i'm not sure if everyone got to see them but here are our before <laughs> before and hopefully we can see a dope ass after again just want to show off the mushrooms really quickly in case not everyone got to see mm, you got little baby mushrooms at the bottom too but yeah, these are pretty decently sized. They're kind of like the size of like a chicken breast, right? Kind of. Not too bad. Non -GMO. The non-GMO. <laughs> yeah, the ones that aren't fucking fed up with. The roids. The roids. Ooh, Izzy. Another favorite of mine. I love sharing food I love to eat. <laughs> drinking it like a corona i think next in my plant-based journey lately i've been adding a lot more healthy vitamins that's going to make sure that i'm getting all the nutrients i need <clears throat> so really just making sure that i'm covered on every end um like i said earlier i do want to veganize a lot more of my recipe a lot more recipes that I grew up eating so I really want to do like an alkaline platano burger or at least challenge myself to do a vegan one I just wanted to challenge myself to do an alkaline one because 
I don't know. I just feel like making healthy alkaline food is a challenge to myself. And I like to prove that I am up to those challenges. And so when I do make really dope ass alkaline meals, I feel super proud of myself. But again, this journey is all about trying to be as healthy and holistic in my approaches as I can. I'm gonna put some salt into my pan. I'll take y'all with me. I'm just gonna put some, oops some salt into my pan i've been watching a lot of fucking food network so i've been picking up a couple of tricks up my sleeve a little bit more seasoning just because i really really want to make sure that this is as seasoned as possible again growing up i did not like mushies so it's important to me and i'm just adding some nutritional yeast which i'm hoping i can already see is making the dough look a little bit more yellow so my hope in this is not only to add more nutrients in this because nutritional yeast has uh what is it that it has vitamin b yeah specifically designed to meet the nutritional needs of vegetarians vegans and anyone wanting an excellent source of thiamine riboflavin niacin folic acid and vitamins b6 and 12 super cheap to get so awesome i learned about nutritional yeast the first time around the second time around, i went plant-based and i actually never bought it until this year and i actually really do believe it gives a really nice um like cheesy kind of flavor all right moment of truth <laughs> Our first mushroom, oyster, 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 mushroom, oyster, chicken wing. Like this is what I like to see. I like to see the seasonings. Like that's, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so let the journey begin. I'm gonna take this. Oh, we got another little chicky tender. This is our first boy. I don't know why it's so <laughs> Cool. So my hands are nice and clean. And I'm actually just throwing it in there. I'm making sure it gets in the insides too. Because I want all of this to be crispy. I don't just want the outside to be crispy. Alright. That looks pretty damn good. That's why it's really important. That's why I really wanted to coat the middle too. Because I really want this all to be super well seasoned. But also being gentle, right? Because these do these are like their base is small. So this is why I said earlier that's really important to make sure that you have your base still intact. Because you don't want these delicate mushrooms to just fall apart on you. There's no time like the present. All right. So. <laughs> yeah, there's some water on the floor that just slipped. <laughs> I really hope that was on camera because that shit looked really. That felt funny. So he is gonna work on frying them. Um, I'm gonna check in with him. In a little bit to see how they're looking i want to make alkaline garlic knots because garlic is actually not alkaline um yeah garlic isn't but i think onions are alkaline but garlic isn't so i've seen some recipes on pinterest on how to make like alkaline uh garlic knots and so i really do want to try them i also have another um alkaline switch that i have made and i definitely don't like want to go back to or i don't want to not i don't want to go back to the time when i didn't do this <laughs> so this is spelt flour which is alkaline and so my next recipe i want to do is spelt flour or chickpea flour knots with garlic um so i'm gonna keep on 
assembling. Hopefully y'all can see. It's my next size. Before I, I started dredging them, I went back and put in more seasoning. Because I was like, I ain't hear no bell. I ain't seen no ancestor dip up here before me and tell me I put enough seasoning. So I was like, let me put some more seasoning in there. I wonder, I wonder if we can start uh, cultivating our own oyster mushrooms. That'd be pretty fucking dope. I would love to do that. Honestly, what I really, really want to do in life is I really want to have a whole lot of fucking land. And I want to just be able to live almost entirely off of my own land. That looks good. It don't really look like chicken. Look at me made tenders. It does kind of look at me made tenders. We have one mushroom done. Hmm. I mean, I did coat it. So I think another thing that's making it less look like chicken is because it's like really coat coated in um. So I wonder when AirPods falling out. I can just see it. <laughs> Pink. Yeah, the ability to live off of my own land. That's also why I wanted to have a tiny house. I wanted a tiny house and a big plot of land so that I could do yoga outside. I could have my own garden. I always want to live somewhere tropical too because I just, I want lemon trees and um, mango trees. All that tropical ish. Like I said, I'm Dominican. And so perhaps that, tro that desire to be somewhere tropical and have my own land is uh, deeply ingrained within my blood and my DNA. But yeah, I'm working on flowering all of this as my partner is frying. I think, oh, you going? Yeah, I think the tongs just might not be working. I think the tongs, I think y'all just might need to get dirty. Y'all just might need to get your hands in your food. You know, make sure your hands are clean. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you was doing before you was cooking. But maybe you want to maybe you wanna get your hands in the, the flour and the dredge and all of that and really make sure. Because that's what I'm doing. You know, we... I uh, want to make sure... <laughs> Where am I putting this? You still have... Oops. Oh, it flipped the camera and I don't have hands. <laughs> Can I flip it like that? Oh, look at that. No hands. No hands. But yeah, here's what they're... Doing. We've also really enjoyed making, like, stuff with tofu. Um, now, tofu is not alkaline. And you might find some mixed... Um, Mixed reactions, mixed feelings about tofu. Do your research. Um, listen to yourself, to your body. Listen to what your needs are. I know that tofu is very accessible to a lot of people. Tofu is really cheap. And it's a very easy way for a lot of people to remove meat from their life. However, like I said, there's mixed feelings on whether or not, damn, that was popping. <laughs> I hope y'all heard that, because that's like, that was sizzling. That was me having wet hands. <laughs> ah, you know what? We got time. I'm going to tell y'all why people don't like tofu. In the 90s, and I will actually say in the 70s, there were research, there were studies done on Asian populations, specifically Japanese and Chinese, I believe, because Japanese people have, are, some of the oldest people in the world are Japanese. So researchers wanted to know why it was that Japanese people were living so long. And they noticed that a big part of their diet was tofu. And so, which tofu, if you don't know, is made from soybeans. And so researchers started doing research on tofu to see the effects. And so, in the 70s and 80s, they were saying that tofu was going to, like, decrease your issues with heart health. Um, you know, it was going to be really great for your heart health, for your body. You were going to live long. And then in the 90s slash early 2000s, there were other research that was done. 
And this other research pointed out that tofu or soybeans might actually cause a lot more harm than good. I want to preface that in my research, both the, the research that was done in the 70s slash 80s that was saying that tofu was amazing and it was great, and the research that was done in the 90s slash early 2000s that was saying tofu was terrible, don't eat it, both of those studies had very little numbers, very limited population, the studies were not conducted well. I mean, it was the 70s and the 90s, you know. <laughs> they, they didn't have, not to say that science is, um, science is malleable, science changes. And so the research that they had there was not very well executed. So now you have people who are saying, oh my God, tofu is terrible, but they're basing it off of these really, really small, poorly designed studies that were done in isolated um, areas. So again, that voice crass. So again, y'all do whatever research y'all want to do. I'm not going to judge you because I eat tofu. However, after somebody brought it up to me, that looks like a really good chicken tender, but it also looks like a fucking mushroom. <laughs> but this looks good. It actually looks really crispy. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but as I'm tapping it, I can hear a crunch, a crack to it. So to me, it's something that they're frying really good. After somebody brought up that stuff about tofu to me and I did my research, I decided personally that I was going to cut back my, my consumption of tofu to about one to two times a week. And that was because I like tofu. It really is, um, it's a very easy way to replace meat. It can soak up literally any like seasoning or whatever you throw at it. It just soaks it all up because it's literally just like soybean paste and water that you um you soak you drain out. But because I understand that there may or may not be health concerns that have to do with tofu and I myself didn't know if they were true or not, but I just know that my body likes it and it's cheap. I decided to cut back on it and so I didn't want to eliminate it and if my body or my intuition says now nah, girl you need to cut out tofu out of your life then so be it I will cut out tofu uh, out of my life but it's not gonna be because a couple of studies said that tofu was bad and those designed those studies were made in like the early 2000s again you got to trust what your own what your own body you have to trust what your own body. like nobody knows your body better than you and so you know, take those things with a grain of salt. So we have four mushrooms left. And they aren't looking too bad, honestly. Again, I'm just making sure I'm getting into every single crevice because I want this whole, I want this whole mushroom to be super crispy. So we've noticed that some of the batter is a little too thick. So we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to take out this one mushroom I had chilling in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of my oat milk. And I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning too because anytime you add something new to your, whatever it is you're cooking, you're just basically changing the like composition of it. So it's important that you re-season. Let me know if there's any, yeah, if there's any suggestions, any foods you guys wanna see veganized any recipes you're just like I want to try that out but I don't know if it's gonna taste good I'll try it out for you girl <laughs> boo because you know not all of us are identified as women that's cool this looks a lot better a little bit more like tempura all right so my hands are ready to dredge all right let's try this again Okay, not mad at it. Making sure again that the dredge is in every corner, every crevice. Same way y'all would treat, you know, same way we grew up watching our parents treating meat is the same way we gotta season and treat and rub up on and love our, our veggies too. Cause how else in the fuck are they gonna become out, come good? How are they gonna become like, wonderful so this is less of that glob that we were noticing in our earlier chickens not that they were bad i'm still gonna fuck up every single one of these oyster mushrooms however these do look 
think. A lot less. A lot less goopy. Yeah. Oh, this one I have really high hopes for. This one, for some reason, is like the most stable mushroom wing we have. I have high you hopes for this one. I'm like taking my time because this is this is the one I feel like could be, you know, our redeeming wing. It's the one. It's the one. I see all the seasoning on the dredge, like. I have high hopes. Our wings. They smell fantastic, like. I can smell the seasoning. The thyme was a fantastic addition i'm gonna have to like i'll take a video later but they don't oh wow there's parts of this that looks legit like fried chicken this part right here to me that part right there like screams fried chicken and again once they come out of the hot oil i'm sprinkling them with our um uh what is that it was kosher salt and pepper that we mix together as like what we, you know, salt bay as our finishing seasoning whenever we do take stuff out. I always like to finish it off in some salt and pepper. Bye. Mm. All right, and this is our last one. So I think after this, we're gonna move on to our Baked mac and cheese. Yeah, I think after this we'll move on to our baked mac and cheese. Um, our brownies are done. So at this point all we need to finish is our salad. I'm telling y'all, I hope that when y'all make it, y'all having as good of a time as we are because it smells fantastic. Walnut meat was such an amazing like recipe that I feel like we've kind of perfected and it's kind of become a staple. Like whenever I make walnut meat, I just make a fuck ton and I literally will just use it. Use it. Any leftovers I have, uh, pasta, burritos, like anything. I'm not going to lie. Some of these really look like wings. Some of them do not. So it's really going to be down to the taste. Mm -hmm. It's such a good crunch to it. Mm. Oh shit, that tastes really good. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I need some barbecue sauce. I was really debating whether I was going to make these like barbecue wings. Like I was like, barbecue wings with some baked mac and cheese? That sounds like a fucking match made in heaven. Ooh. Now that one looks good. That one also looks like, that one also looks like a, like it could be meat. It smells like meat. All right, so we're going to try our oyster, or, ooh, oyster mushrooms with a little bit of barbecue sauce. But yeah, I was like baked mac and cheese with some crispy fried wings. Like that sounds fucking fantastic. But I wanted to see what these oyster mushrooms were hitting for and how I could improve this. Oh. Seasoning, perfect. I want the mushrooms to be a little bit more crispy. I think our coating is fantastic. Like, look at this, yo. That looks fucking good. Seasoning, fantastic. The crispy outside coat, fantastic. The way it shreds and breaks apart, like... That's fantastic. I think if we did this with chicken of the wood mushrooms, again, if you get to ever eat chicken of the wood mushrooms, fantastic. I have never seen a mushroom that tastes exactly like meat. But if you ever have the chance to try it, go for it. But I believe if we adapted this recipe and used chicken of the wood, it would really, really bring that meaty flavor. Or I've been plant-based for... With the tofu press. The See, I worry about that because they're delicate. Mm -hmm. However, I agree with you that there needs to be something. So what if? Because one of the videos. What I if saw we? Was that. What? 
they pressed it. They pressed it. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. To make it country fried steak. Mm. I was going to say maybe if we kind of like how potatoes, like when you put salt, like you heavily salt potatoes, you see like the water come out. So I was wondering if maybe we could do that to bring the water content down. But otherwise, fucking fantastic. This fantastic. However, if you want it to be more crispy like chicken, it's worth trying to analyze and see like what can be improved. Again, this is our first time ever making this. And I think we fucking knocked it out of the park. I truly think we... we whoops. Okay, so that being said, our last wing is being done. We are moving on to our baked pasta. And I think this is where I'm going to end the Facebook Live. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you guys feel inspired to go forth. And um, yeah, like I hope this encourages you guys to go forth and start experimenting into your kitchen and hopefully make some more plant-based meals. So that being said, peace. Namaste. Why is